<laughs> All right, good morning, guys. Good morning. Happy Friday to everyone. All right, let me finish my inviting. Because <laughs> I'm unstoppable. This week went by pretty fast. Seems like anyway. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Lucille. Good morning, Myra. We missed you this morning, Miss Lucille. Mr. Andre, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Stop the ball. I'm gonna try to post um um this morning's Breakfast of Champions on my page this morning. So for those of you that want to hear it. All right. If y'all would, be sure to share with others on this morning. I would definitely appreciate it. Miss Joanne, good to see you this morning. Good to see you. Yeah, it is Friday. We're so glad to have made it to the end of the week. At least I am, anyway. <clears throat> I think this old nasty bug been trying to catch me. But um, thanks be unto God, he's been really covering me this week and making sure that I, you know, try to stay in a good place and safe space been trying to take all my meds that i need to need to take and uh, i also try to get the rest every as often as i can so just grateful for that hope you guys are staying safe as well all right i'm gonna try not to be long this week i want to kind of uh, close out uh this week as we've been talking about that pressure applied and challenging through going through difficult challenges in life yeah i got this song uh war by um uh, what's his name? Uh, Charles Jenkins. Sometimes that's what you got to remind yourself that you're in the middle of war. <laughs> and uh, yeah, some things you got to apply that pressure to and help yourself to realize that the battle don't belong to me. It belongs to the Lord. And sometimes it's just me showing up to a thing and getting a good understanding uh, about life. And from there, you know, we'll see what the Lord has to say. So I want to welcome y'all in. I'll let this play for a little while while everybody's coming in. This means war. This means war. This means war. This means war.
Good morning, Aunt Sylvia. I see you on here. I see you liked it. I don't see your name on it, but I do see that you dropped in. Yeah. This means war. This means war. Good morning, Andrea. I saw your thumbs up. Miss Ned, good morning. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my you can't have my Hey, I think that's the final frontier this week is you got to, some of that stuff you're going through, you just got to plead the blood over that, <laughs> you know, because if the enemy had his way, he tried to take everything from us, you know, because we busy, <laughs> we busy doing stuff, <laughs> busy being, being, acting like a child. Y'all, we talked about that childlike behavior this morning with Breakfast of Champions. Woo, what I tell you, it brought a lot of revelation to a lot of things. <laughs> We act like act like a kid in a whole lot of areas in our lives, you know. Anytime you <clears throat> throwing your hands up stuff, you giving up, you know, when you know you need to be fighting for something. That's that child. They don't want me, I don't want them, you know. <laughs> you don't want to do nothing for me, I ain't gonna do nothing for you. We just we just have all kind of crazy stuff that we do. And in reality you need to be fighting for what it is that you want, you know. So <clears throat> Yeah, there's something I want to kind of share. I'm trying to get to this message. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Growing up spiritually. Well, I tell you, I think that's where we are in a lot of our lives. We got to learn how to grow up. Grow up spiritually. Not, you know, to the point to where you say, well, I'm grown. I can do whatever I want to do. Yeah, that's that's good. That sounds good. But some of your behavior seems a little outdated, you know. Sounds like some of the stuff that you were doing in your old life. And if it is, you may have to kind of, you know, change your appetite, you know, for what you call being an adult. And I can do what I want to do. Uh, but sometimes, because sometimes the things that you do, lead you to things that you really did not want <laughs> you know so um throwing in the towel and giving up all the time is not always the answer and y'all even me i'm realizing even within myself i have become too lax with a whole lot of stuff and um you know and sometimes it's because you've been busy you know um minding some other thing and then you start realizing you dropping balls you know, you dropping eggs, whatever, and you got to get back on your post where you need to be. Like growing up spiritually, you know, we can't get to the point to where I got mine and, you know, that's it. You got to get back into your set place where God wants you to be at. That's, that's what we call self-actualization, you know, realizing where you have been called to serve. And once you get to that place of realizing that, get in that place and stay in that place because that's where the blessings of the Lord are going to be at for you. I think Psalms 91 says it best. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place, that gifted place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. It's like a, it's like a hidden place that God has for you and everything that you need is, is being supplied and taken care of. You know, I think sometimes we uh, have a tendency to um, go off of the reactions of others uh, and we, um, we, we act versus responding properly to a thing. And, uh, depending on my hands already full, I ain't got no more room when really sometimes you set some things down and allow somebody else to pick up something so that you can carry what you need to carry. I think that's what Moses was telling, uh, the children of Israel, or either the Lord was telling Moses to tell them that he said that those, there are some that can handle um, uh, tribes of a hundred, some of them can handle fifties and some of them can just handle just a little bit. And I think in our growth stages in life, you have to start determining what, 
where you need to be. I, I know you may be tired of always, every time you turn around, you got to help people out and, you know, help people get to, sometimes they don't want to listen to what you have to say. Yeah, that's, that's true. But where are you gifted to be? And if that's where you're gifted to be, you want to find yourself staying in that set place. Because believe it or not, it really does bring joy uh, to your heart to bring, to be in a place uh, to where there's fulfillment, not just in the life of other people, but also the fulfillment in your life as well. So, uh, but anyway, I know it's just a few of y'all on here today, but it don't take a whole lot for me. You know, I don't have to have no multitudes of people uh, because whatever message God has given to me, um, it will reach where it's supposed to reach at the appropriate time. And uh, I just believe that if we'll just get in and, and do what it is that God has called us to do, um, God will, he will get the glory out of it all. Um, so I want to start off and uh, we're going to talk about growing up spiritually. Uh, we, we've been talking all week about applying pressure to a thing and managing through difficult times. Uh, you have to remember that the Bible says that there are some things that we go through that can only come out through fasting and prayer, you know, uh, because, you know, e even in our greatest, our highest effort, natural effort, we'll still come up short, you know, and there are times when the Lord says you have to turn on uh, a more effective approach. There, That's one of the reasons that you, you gave your life to Christ is that you can operate on a higher level, you know, with uh, a greater impact, but you have to go with wisdom with this to do it. And so sometimes the Lord said, I, I need, I need you to continue to grow spiritually in the things of God, you know, within your family, y'all shouldn't be still throwing plates in the house or cursing each other, or using childlike behavior still fussing at people on the job, things like that. We need to learn how to use our words wisely. I know you're angry. I know you're frustrated. But can you share your uh, your emotion in a different way besides running off, leaving? I'm leaving, throwing, you know, divorce words around, little stuff like that. We, we, we got to learn how to use our words a little bit wiser. And so the Lord has different things that he shares. One of the things about growing up spiritually, we have to remember is that it's a process and it takes time. See, it takes moments like these, you know, to say, you know what, that's what's going on. I, I was feeling so immature and I keep repeating some of the same patterns. It's because you're stunted somewhere spiritually. And you have to know that uh, that, that, that spiritual, uh, growing up spiritually is a process and it takes time because there's a lot of unfolding that has to take place, unfolding of childlike uh, behavior, things that need to be put up. You know, sometimes, you know, God has, you know, told us to take our hands off of something. And we keep putting our hand on it anyway because, you know, we're just curious, you know, as how some children are. And so what he does is he sends in the fivefold ministry to help us do these things. You know, he sends in the prophet. Uh, he sends in the apostle. Uh, he was sending in the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. That's why when y'all hear um, sometime when churches, uh, all of a sudden they say we need revival. That means that we need a, 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 a place to grow spiritually. We've gone as far as we can go with words. Now we need to grow to another level. We need to bring the fivefold ministry in the house. So we're bringing revival in. Okay. So we can all sit down at the table and eat. Husbands and wives need to sit at the table and eat. Children need to sit at the table. That's what revival does. It brings us all together so that we can hear a bigger portion of the story. So he brings in the fivefold ministry, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. He said all for the edifying of the body of Christ. For those of you that uh, need to know the word, this is, this is in Ephesians 4 and 11, 11 through 15. And um, I want to kind of go back up just a little bit to kind of bring you into context of what, you know, why uh, maybe these apostles were brought in other than, you know, what I was already telling you. Uh, verse four, uh, um, uh, the first verse, it says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. See, sometimes you need a wake up call uh, for motherhood being a leader, uh, being a pastor, uh, whatever it is that God has assigned you to, 
He said, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. And he said, be completely humble and gentle and be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Making every effort. Uh, there, uh, He said, there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope where you were called. He says, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all, in all. That, that goes back to this conversation we've been having in Breakfast Champions all week long. It's about your perception. And see, I could see it one way. And there are often times where you have to stop to see it God's way. Because maybe I'm still at a childlike state. And I can't see any further than that. That's because you need some part of the fivefold ministry into your life. That's why you get connected to life groups. You get, get connected to spiritual communities. You get connected to your church or you get involved a little bit more in your church so that you can get to the point to where you can hear what the apostle has to say. How do we establish order? My household is completely out of order. The church is out of order. Um, the job is out of order. You need to sit down and have uh, a team meeting or you need to have a quarterly meeting or something to where we can sit down and commune with one another until we come into one mindset. We come into a place of agreement. We as the body of Christ, it's the same thing. That should be our ultimate goal as Christians is that we come into one faith. Doesn't make, make no difference what religion you are. We need to come into a faith. We come into a bond of peace. It don't make no difference who you're serving, whatever the case may be. Because the Bible said every knee's going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord in the end. But sometimes it takes, a, it takes, it takes things to get us there. So you shouldn't be arguing with people about what their faith, what their belief is, all that. Listen, the whole point is to come into union with God so that we can hear what he has to say. Verse 7, he said, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ appropriated it. This is why it said when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. He said, what does he, what does he ascending mean? except that he also descended to the lower uh, earthly regions, finding out where the needs are at, okay? And he said, he who, ascended, he, he who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Listen, th this leads me to, uh, you know how sometimes you say, well, I don't know why I always have to be the one to go through stuff, and, you know, I always, I'll never get away with nothing, and, you know, everybody else do whatever they want to do, and it seems like to me this and that. That's what we call sometimes you have to ascend. You have to go to a deeper level of that, so that you can come back and descend and show people how to do things properly. I think that's what David said too. David said, even after he had sinned, he said, Lord, created me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within me. Because we got to grow up spiritually. Because if I can get caught in an act like that, man, can you imagine what the rest of the people are going to do? See, everybody's not going to repent and say that it was me. But those that have been called to a higher standing with God, yeah, you may fall into things, you may, you know, whatever, but the ultimate thing is when you when you really have a heart for the things of God, God leaves a door called repentance there for us, but he also brings in correction. All right, if one is out there doing that, somebody else is out there doing it too. So let's bring us all to the table and let's come in for a revival with this. And so and then he went on to say in verse eight, uh, 11, he says, so Christ himself, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers for the purpose of equipping his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. He was the one that established this. He called them in. Okay, for a purpose. And so you know that thing, you waking up in the middle of the night, it's just a calling, I promise you. That's the only reason you're not resting at nighttime. That's the only reason that, you know, you keep wondering, why do I keep having these groundhog experience? Why is it that certain people keep popping up in my life? I call them, those are your spotters or those are your sponsors. I keep running to these kind of people. 
And then you start realizing, oh, 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 we're getting ready to do a work. We're getting ready for a revival. So everybody got to get into their particular spaces, marriages. There are people that have been set aside to help build up marriages in the faith for our children. There are people that have been set aside to build up the children in the faith. Our men, there are people that have been set aside to help build up this for the unity for, so that the families can come together and dwell together. I really believe that that's what's missing in a lot of our homes because we're not growing up as we should. We're not getting the proper help that we need so that we can stop being, what verse 14 says, not no longer, um, he said, then we no longer will be infants being tossed back and forth by the waves and the winds. You know, you're not going back and forth about what somebody else said. Then you're out there on social media. Then you're out there on Instagram and you're popping up. You got everybody in your DM. Everybody got this to say, well, what about the world? Well, maybe it is. All the no, 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 no. He comes in to establish order, to settle your mind, to settle your heart, to hear what it is that the spirit has to say. See, after you've heard everything that everybody else got to say, you ought to give God time to say something. So much to the point to where you grow up. And you stop going to people first and you start going to God about your health, about your wellness, about your mind, about your decisions, all of that. But he brings us into a place of unity so that we can grow up and be built up in our faith. Uh, when we talk about growing up spiritually, um, not only is the fivefold ministry given to us, uh, but because one, God wants us to grow up so that we each can do the work of the ministry. Uh, see, because <clears throat> in, in this season that I'm in, um, I know that I'm planting seeds for the next generation. And eventually what's going to happen, it's going to be their turn to grow up. But I want to make sure that I pass on a good mantle, that I be a great representative, so that when they do get ready to operate, even in their region or their area, that we'll be good. You know, one of the things that I'm I'm loving seeing this, uh, there there is this ministry here called Social Dallas. A very young guy leading this ministry. Grew up right over here in Cedar Hill. His father was Nigerian. Mother is from Mount Pleasant. They mixed up those two cultures together and they made it work and created this beautiful son that loves God, that has a, a show enough love for God. But in the background of his ministry, he got his mom and his dad back there too. He's got some of the older generation that's in and coming in to help equip the body. See, you can't equip it all by yourself. You just got into this world. You just gotten into this. You need people that have wisdom. So a lot of times when we are even growing in the unity of the faith, you got to get yourself around some seasoned people in life. You know, where you're trying to go, what you're trying to do. You're not going to be able to do it on your because sometimes it'll look like it's too much. Yeah, because you're too, you know, you're, you're not mature enough to handle that. You've not been able to decipher between relationships and all these kind of things. I always say woe to the one that feels like they've gone through so much in life that they got the answers to it all. You do not. You're still growing in some areas. And there are a lot of times we have to put a muzzle over our mouth when you have not experienced enough in life to give answers to that particular problem. Sometimes you have to go back into your, you know, your, your repertoire of who are the people that God has brought into my life. Maybe I'm not the one that should be providing that type of assistance. Maybe I need to call on someone else. That's a part of the maturity that comes in because we are all, yes, yeah, Shirley, we are all growing in a space to where we, 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 we got to learn more. Y'all, I'll never forget when I first uh, came into uh, ministry, uh, really gave my life to Christ. Um, I knew that I needed to um, sit around some wise people. Um, I didn't go in doing a lot of talking. Uh, I went in observing. I went in, I went in discerning. I'd, I'd always been uh, very fond of my elderly community, uh, always have been, and I always gave them the utmost respect um, with wisdom. And now some of them didn't necessarily have no wisdom to share, you know, but I respected the position that they were in. And, um, and eventually God led me to people that had spiritual wisdom. 
And some of my greatest teachers that I've had in my early walk with, with God, uh, they were some of the greatest orators. Uh, they were gr very great in their walk with God, very patient with their time. And I kept noticing that everywhere I went, God always sent the mothers in my life. You know, uh, they were always those, those spiritual giants. And I got a chance. They let me sit around them and, you know, glean from them. Y'all do with anything, anything they want me to do. You want me to go run your copies off? <laughs> God, I ain't no word. I ain't know nothing. I wanted to sit up under them and... You know, y'all y'all want me to go and, you know, tell people be quiet, <laughs> you know, whatever they needed me to do. Because eventually I knew that if I sat around that fire long enough, I would come out of that baby state. And I would eventually be groomed enough to where I could do these things on my own as well. And uh, it's, just, it's just those phases that you end up going through. And then I started understanding that these are ministry gifts that people have. Because I started noticing that some people were stronger in some areas than others. That was a part of the growing up spiritually. It's realized that everybody don't have the same gift. But if you respect the office, eventually what your gifting is will be revealed as well. And that was a part of the growing up stages. Learn how to be quiet. And respecting people in their spaces, learn, understand that they're, that's their perception. And with their perception, what you were doing is that you were learning where these people came from, you know, how they grew up. There were some people I remember, uh, the deacons, you know, I grew up uh, in the state in the age where the deacons were still leading service at that particular. And then some churches, they're still doing that. But they would, you know, do the devotion in the morning time. And uh, that was called call to order. That's what that was when the deacons got up there. But then I started realizing there was some of them that were praying from the depths of their heart. And then some of them were praying some, um, some routine prayers. And I started realizing that's what he's talking about, the Pharisees and the scribes of the people out there uh, just uh, quoting, you know, they just saying things so that they can be heard. They didn't really have no deep revelation with God. I, I didn't know this at the time. But if you sit around it long enough, you'll start realizing there are some that really do have a deep, deep um, um, relationship with God because it touches the core of who you are. And then there are some people that just been hanging around the church. I learned later on, they call it the tabernacle. So you got to sit around the church long enough to learn the different lingos of, 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 okay, where everybody's at. Respect them in their respective places, but understand that everybody didn't go in. There are some people that are sitting, still sitting on the outside of the tabernacle. They're close to the church. They go to church. They say things like, I've been going to church all my life, but they ain't changed. they still doing all kinds of stuff. They will drink on the parking lot, won't think nothing of it. Listen, they'll go in their household, have a full-fledged bar in their houses. I'm just, I'm just saying, but they will swear to you that they are deacons in the church. They, you know, but at the same time, it, that's their perception. That's what they've seen. But there are times when God holds you to a higher calling than that, to whom much is given. That means God not going to put much in your hand because he's not going to allow you to, um, you know, contaminate the body. Because that means you just got to the door and stopped. You ain't going any further. You just got to the door. And y'all, I realized that's not what I wanted. So I kept on walking. I went inside the church. I wanted to know what was going on inside of here. I came not in that baby-like state. You know, stop quoting what everybody was saying outside the door. Because I started seeing they had some behavior that wasn't lining up <laughs> with the word. You know, but I didn't criticize. I just realized it is. Sometimes that thing will hit you in your belly. But then I realized... Yeah, they kind of mean, too. Uh, let, me, let me keep on walking on, you know. And I think as you keep walking, God shows you that you really are growing up in the spirit. Next thing is to be effective in ministry. You must grow out of babyhood. Some of the folks that we, we deal with in church, they still on baby stages. I think Maslow, the, he's a psychologist, and he talks about how there's a hierarchy of need. There are still some people still down at the bottom, still dealing with where we're going to live, you know, they still trying to figure out how they're going to pay their bills and different. When you're still struggling in those areas, it's very hard for you to come up to a place to where, you know, my safety. You know, I was watching this movie last night and it like like to make me sick in the stomach. You were one of those old, um, Danny Glover was playing in a movie um, and uh, he was literally, uh, uh, they were free from slavery, but he was still acting like a slave. So much to the point to where 
uh, one of his children did something wrong and one of the, um, the, the white officers came to their house and, and told them that we could put your child in an institution for doing that. And all the child did was went into a bathroom that said for whites only. But they said, we can, we can commit your child to an institution if you don't get them trained right. And he was like, yes, sir. Yes, that was making me sick to my stomach. But I understand back in the days, whatever, he was yes, sir. And y'all, he had so much fear in his heart that he went in and literally beat his kids that night. He got that switch off that tree and beat those kids. And where the children are not necessarily understanding to the full this thing about, you know, um, they want us to be in our right place because they had white friends. It just wasn't making sense to them. We can go into, we can have white friends because they grew up with them, but we can't use y'all bathroom. Well, it just doesn't make sense. But it was the father that, you know, he got stunted, fear. Sometimes fear can stunt people. You know, when you're depending on other people to do certain things. So you will literally uh, create a method of conversation. You know, yes, sir. You know, all these kind of things. And not really standing up for who you really are. And I think sometimes that's how people got stuck in church, too. And on the outside, they were still at the yes, sir. You know, people making you do stuff. But there needs to be a place in your heart to where you find purpose for what it is that you're doing. You know, you're going to need God for strength. You're going to need God for courage. You're going to need him to help you to navigate through some of the things. You can't use drinking, alcohol, uh, drugs, sex, all those kind of things, you know, or work. Sometimes we get too in, indulged in our work. And before long, we're not developing a relationship. We're not growing. We're still in a baby-like state. You're still doing child childish behaviors instead of going to the father who can help you to mature in some things. So that you can grow out of that. You don't have to walk around today. Here it is. And I'm coming into your household. Here it is Friday. And some people still afraid. They ain't got enough money. You didn't have enough money net last week. You didn't have enough money last year. To pay your bill. But you still stuck in. You still stayed in that place. You still on the outside. You're doing baby like stuff. Then God said he would supply all of your need. You got a need. And you mean to tell me God's not going to supply it? Yeah, as long as you keep staying on the outside doing baby-like things, you keep repeating and uh, re keep, you know, you find yourself doing things that other people, that may not be for you. You may not be at your capacity. You may be not at the place where God wants you to be at, so that you can have things to the full until it overflows. Standing on the outside is not always the best thing to do. Sometimes you got to move in a little bit. You got to apply some pressure to this. And sometimes that thing got to get heated enough in your life to where you start doing things better. Y'all, I, I always talk about how when I first started <clears throat> in, my, in my career working and um, I realized that I like nice things. You know, and in order to have nice things, you're not going to be able to stay on the outside. You're going to do something a little bit different. You can't be partying. Y'all, I remember I had to shut down going to clubs, you know, because you're trying to have something in life and you're going to do something a little bit different than what you've been doing. So I noticed that when I just did that a little bit, just shut the door to that. It opened up opportunities for me to make a better living, to be able to be home with the kids, you know, different things like that. And then eventually I got to a place I started realizing, you know, there's more to just this there are some other things. I, I want to reach a place of fulfillment within my own self. You know, that's how it is on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You reach that place where now we got a place to stay. We got food to eat. We got air, whatever. Now I need to get to a place of safety. I need to make sure that people are, are my family is in a place where they can grow where they're not thinking about gunshots going off. They're not thinking about whether somebody's going to come and rape them or different things like that. You want to be able to provide a living to where your family can move on and do some things to where they can have freedom in the mind, but also teach them about humility. You know, we did these things so that we can get you into a safe place so everybody can reach a place of self-actualization. You got to bring it, come into a place where you have socialization too. That's why I keep talking about community so much. Still growing up in the spirit, you need to have great community around you, great friendships around you so that you can listen. When you were a child, you did a little thing like that's mine. That's mine. You know, um, I don't want to share. 
You know, and sometimes parents have to make you give away things so that you can learn how to share. Sometimes they have siblings. You know, you have siblings in your life to teach you how to share. But what happens when you're that only child or you never grew out of that, you know, space of sharing? you got to get to a place to where you start growing, uh, to where you start in involving other people into your life. Because everything is not always the same. You, you, it helps you to see things from different perspectives. There are some people, y'all, I think I'm going to stay on this thing too. Some of us are in childlike behaviors because we got stuck somewhere. We're not allowing people to come into our lives, to add value to our lives, because we think we're the sharpest knife in the drawer. No, that's called fear. That's on your heart. It, 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 makes, you, it makes you push into um, uh, growing out of what you went through. And it makes you start going into a new era to where you start seeing life through different lenses. It takes, it takes successful people in the heart and mind. To, to, to go to places like that. And, and what helps me is that I get around spiritual things. The Lord reminds me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, anytime a fear tries to, help, uh, tries to grip my heart, I hear the word coming up. I, I, there, God didn't give me a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. That's that growing up. So now when I have those introverted ways, because it's just been me, myself, and I, I learned how to come into the unity that we're going back to Ephesians. He brought the apostle, the prophet, the, the evangelist, the pastor and the teacher for the unifying of the body. It didn't mean that one gift was greater than the other. It's that they all work simultaneously together. So when we come into community and we sit together and reason with one another. I get a chance to see somebody else's viewpoint. See, because we didn't all grow up in the same households. One of the worst things you can do is diminish another person's view of something that they went through in life, especially if it was very painful or whatever, uh, you'll never get the ear of that person when you try to act as if what they went through didn't mean anything. See, growing up spiritually says that we share this space together. See, I, I, I dare to believe that in relationship, this is what happened. We're not sharing space together. Your story is not the only story. And you can't have center stage all the time. That's called selfishness and it's called childlike behavior. You can't have center stage all the time. Sometimes you got to let other people share their experiences because maybe it could help you to get out of that Groundhog Day experience that you're having of repeating a cycle of something. You know, maybe you do see the glass half empty most of the time. Why? Because that's what you went through. But don't get mad at me because I see it half full. I don't get mad at you for seeing it half empty. Sometimes we got to come in. How do you see it like that? What, what, I mean, what, what is going on? Y'all, I'll never forget. Uh, I was at, uh, at the college and, and my boss asked me one day, cause you know, that's, that's all I do. I walk in faith everywhere I go. That's all I'm going to, you know, you, you put me in any environment. I'm going to faith my way up out of this. I'm going to talk my way up. I'll never forget. He asked me one day, he said, um, have you ever seen God do anything for you? And y'all, I was quick on the outside, I sure have. He used to tell me about it. And y'all, it was the way you, it's the way you started telling the story. And, and to be honest, I'm trying to figure out which one you want me to tell, Lord. And as I began to start sharing, there was a place in my heart that united with the person. The person had a place of, of um, they had a place of reference within their heart. And it caused them to relax and realize that this girl is real. See, sometimes who you are as a person has to be revealed to people. Because when we're walking in childlike states, we don't know that because all we see is us. See, I'm digging us out of some stuff this week. Some of the people that you encounter, you messing up relationships because you're not developing fellowship with them. You got to stop and ask the question, why do they behave? How, how did you come out of that? You know, I know I'm stuck in it because I talk about it all the time. But how did you come out of that? Do you have any testimonies? And y'all, we built one of the greatest friendships that summer. Because all we did was share testimonies all the time. I heard his dilemmas. I heard the things that he went through. But also I heard God in faith on the other side. That's not the end of the story. Do you want to do it again? And y'all, I'll never forget the day we sat down and, and uh, there was an opportunity coming his way of something that he had been longing for for a while. And I'll never forget that. So do you want it or not? Stop belly aching. Stop crying. 
You are a person of faith. Do you want this or not? Are you through with the child like whining and confessing and all that? Do you want God to do it again? See, because there are times when God is ready to elevate you. Opry, y'all better hear me this morning. When God is ready to elevate you, he's always going to send somebody into your life that has a higher level of faith than you do. Because he said you've been on that too long. Some of it is your wives. Some of it is your husbands. Some of it is friend, new friendships coming in. Because he's trying to get you to another space. You've been there too long. I keep hearing you crying out. And the Bible says the prayers of the righteous avail as much. Now that I hear you crying, that means you stuck somewhere. I'm going to send some people in. And I want to know, will you be ready? Will you come out of that childlike behavior that you got to always take care of things on your own? Will you let me come in and help you through these things? I do believe that a lot of us are in places like that. We're not making room for our new experiences because we are so, we so bent on what we've been through and you don't understand and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I do understand. But I know also you on the outside of that tabernacle. I hear you talking about God. I hear you praying. And your prayers, they, 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 they really are resonating in my heart. But I want to know, when are you going to believe what it is that you're praying? When are you going to believe in the God that you're praying to? When are you going to grow up spiritually enough to say, all right, God, I got stuck somewhere. That experience hurt. That one, I mean, it almost took me out. But it didn't take you out. And then come into a nevertheless month. That's what I hope that happens to many people this weekend. See, that's that applied pressure. And remember I told you that some things can only come out except through fasting and prayer. There are some of us that are going through some hardships in our life. And we need some people to help push us through. And you're going to have to open up called surrender. You're going to have to surrender. You're going to have to surrender all. You know, I know you made a decision. I know you did some stuff. I know you pushed some people out of your life because you didn't understand. Maybe they were going to expose you or whatever. But I need you as the body of Christ to come to a place called humility and say that maybe I am stuck in a place. Maybe I don't have the answers to this. And maybe I have. So you don't nobody want to want nobody to tell them you acting like a child. But you are. You got childlike behaviors. You fussing. You complaining. You throwing temper tantrums. You throwing away what God has brought in to be a blessing to you. That's childlike behavior. And the Bible says when I was a child, and don't be surprised is if all day long you keep hearing this. When I was a child, I acted like a child. But when I became a man, I, when I came up, when I became a mature of a mature statue, I put away childish things because I'm taking a long time to get to where I need to get to. All because I got some experiences in my life that keep on standing up at the door. God wants to take me to another level in life. God wants to answer my prayers, but I won't let him answer my prayers because this experience keeps standing before me. I just can't trust people anymore. You know, somebody hurt me in life. You know, I gave them my all in all. But yeah, you got to remember that people do people things. That doesn't have anything to do with you as a person. Stop taking ownership of what somebody else did, and now you're making everybody else pay for it. How many times is God going to have to send you that canoe or that boat in to keep letting you know that I'm there for you? I, I want You asked me the same thing last night that you asked me three months ago to supply your needs. And when I came through and supplied your needs, you were still in a childlike state. And now you wonder why you're not getting what it is that you desire. It's because children are not permitted to go into places like that. It's only until you start growing up spiritually and you start recognizing that I'm no longer there anymore. Uh, yeah, I got hurt. Yeah, I fell off the bike. Yeah, I had to put a bandage on a band aid on my knee. Or yeah, I cut my finger or whatever. But when are you gonna put some kind of bandage on it? When are you gonna put some kind of ointment on it? When are you gonna let somebody come in and really help you through that? So that you can get to whatever the next level is. Y'all, I think this is a, a universal thing that's going on right now. It's not that God hadn't sent help. Don't tell me that. Not as believers. You got to the door. You got to the door of the tabernacle. Why would you just stay on the outside of it? You recognize 
that this could be a blessing that comes from God, but somewhere you have stopped it all up in midair because it hurts, because it reminds you of something you've gone through before, or you have not exercised your gift in pressing through. You keep going through, you, you, you don't want to divorce after divorce. Every time you run into the same situation, instead of you pushing through, you keep stopping at the same thing. That's why it keeps on repeating itself over and over again. You got a new person in your life, but you're having the same experience that you had before. Who is the common denominator? We are the common denominator. Stop taking ownership for things that other people have done. Go back to who you are as a person. Where were you trying to go? What were you trying to do? And stay committed to who you are. Stop going in and out like little children. One day I want to suck my thumb. Another one I want to be a boss man in the room. No, you're going to make up your mind. Either you want to be one or the other. I understand we vacillate from time to time. But it should not be vacillating from a five to a two. You should not be at a place of maturity in one state and then some trigger comes in and drops you all the way back down to the floor. You got to open up your heart and be healed in some places. If you want what God has for you. And I think that sometimes we've got to open up as the body of Christ and start talking about this stuff. Sis, why are you back here again? Why are you repeating that same cycle? Why do you always say, I already know, I already know. You already know. Why are we here then if you already know? Because you're still in a child life. You never went on to the Lord, I thank you. I thank you for supplying my needs. Because, yeah, you still at, I made this happen. Anytime you're still at, you made it happen, you still at a childlike state. Because to be honest, you can't make nothing happen in your life. All you got to do is watch God. You know how sometimes, I, I remember back at my mom's house, we used to have this old fan, you know, those old water fans that they would have to put, you know, you got to spray that water hose, you know, cool it off, whatever, and it had to cool. It felt like a fresh breeze of opening up the refrigerator when you walked in front of it. I don't know how I remember that at such a young, uh, later age. But, um, but I noticed that sometimes we were getting ready to water the fan and the water spout was a little bit around the corner and you had to turn the faucet on over there but you had to kink the hose up until you got over here where you wanted to dispense the water at and then you open up the hose the water was already flowing but we couldn't see it because it was closed up it was kinked up and then when you open it up it was a gush of water that began to start coming out that's how it is in our life when you walk in and child like babe god has already supplied everything that you need why because the Bible says that everything that pertains to life and godliness, it's already deposited down on the inside of you. But nobody can stop it from growing but you. One, when last time you've been to church? I ain't been a long time because I'm dumb hypocrites. Whatever. You, you deal with hypocrites out there at that bar. Because listen, majority of the time, y'all tell the truth about it. It ain't too many people that don't talk about God everywhere you go. So you sitting over there at the bar with the hypocrites. But you can't come to the church, what you call the hypocrites. You got to make up your mind, the evil, the, the lesser of the two. I'm probably going to find more of what I need when I get to the house of the Lord. You know, y'all yeah, went way back on that one, Alexander. <laughs> but yes, yeah, I'm probably going to find more of what I need. That's what I was telling y'all when it came down to when I, when I first came to Christ. I had to learn different stages of maturity with people. There were the deacons that were there, but when I would hear them pray, I heard them praying different. There were some that I knew had literally been at the feet of Jesus. And then there were some that were just there out of routine. I had to learn the only way I learned the difference is if I keep sitting up under the teachings. Otherwise, I'm going to judge and I'm going to start repeating what it is. Because that's what we do as children. We repeat what we see. But to me, I resonated more with the person that prayed from their heart. And what it did was it opened up a door for me to keep on walking through and bypass those things that were superficial because I was hanging out with the church. I started sitting among them. And next thing I know, I kept growing in my faith. Every time God kept opening up that holes, he started allowing that water just to flow through. Everywhere I went, it was just the growing stage. And that's how it is even in our own life. You can't keep making it. You can't keep making excuses. Because either you won't end to the things of God or you don't. 
You can drink it up. You can smoke it up. You can do whatever you want to do. Sex it up. But ain't nothing going to take the place of a cool drink of water from God. You got to grow up. And come up out of that childlike behavior. Well, I'm going to do what I did. Nobody never let me do what I want to do. So I'm just going to do me. And where, where has that gotten you? How's that working for you? You got to grow up. You're acting like a child. That's what you're doing. And then you don't want nobody to tell you you acting child. You ready to fight when somebody tells you you acting child. You know you acting child because you want to fight. When you, why, why do you have to fight for what you want? Why can't you just hear what a person is saying and ask yourself in your heart, am I acting childish? Am I being, even every time you want to defend yourself, that's childlike behavior. All I'm trying to do is get us all to move the needle. Some of us need to come from the outside, that tabernacle, and you need to go on the inside. And then there are some of you been sitting on the inside of the church for a while. You got the certain seat in the house. You don't want nobody. So you still brought your childlike behavior inside the church. I don't want nobody sitting in my seat. Y'all, I have seen folks go as far as if you sit in their seat, they'll literally sit behind you and make you uncomfortable until you get up and move. You turn around. Oh, oh, am I sitting in your seat? And you just so stubborn. That you just keep standing there instead of going to sit somewhere else. Maybe somebody else needed to sit there today. Or maybe you need to get to church a little bit earlier. Whichever one. But I've seen some things. You you in the church, but you're still acting childish. God, let me bring it to bring it to life. God done bless you and you still acting like a little kid. You don't want to share the things that you have. You know, everybody got to go get their own, you know. But that's what God brought you in for so you can open up the door. For the people to have an experience like you did. And even to go back and teach others. Y'all, there was this, this gentleman. Every now and then the Lord allows me to coach men uh, through different things. They, they think they want a relationship with me. What they're really looking for is coaching. So, But this particular gentleman uh, came in and uh, he knew it was not a relationship he was looking for. But this particular guy came in in tears. I met this gentleman on a, uh, a air, uh, air, airplane ride. We were going to Atlanta. And y'all, that's all he talked about was love for God. I met him in the, actually in the airport. And amazingly, we actually end up sitting next to each other on the plane. You know there wasn't nobody but God. God brought these two believers together. All I had was a short and got a two hour encounter with him. We exchanged numbers when we left. And y'all, surprisingly, when I got back home, it was about a month or so later uh, that when I got home, the gentleman called and he was in tears. And he told me that the Lord sent him to me. And he couldn't sleep. Uh, he had been a strong believer, you know, in his faith, strong in community with the brothers. Man, he was at the top of his game on his job. I mean, doing very, very well. You know, all of all of that. And but he had hit this snare in life. And he couldn't figure out what was going on. He wasn't sleeping. He was scared to close his eyes. Y'all this went on for months and months. I think that was from April, I'll never forget it was April 15th, and it lasted all the way up to September 1st. Never forget. And uh, this guy was even so afraid. Uh he would go into and I think I had become a crutch to him too. You have to be careful of those kind of things, you know, because you're supposed to be leading people to Christ you know, not becoming Christ for them or whatever. And uh, I'll never forget this gentleman. He had gone into the drugstore one day, uh, was going in just to get some simple things like, you know, some vitamins or whatever. And he became afraid of people in the store. And I'm like, what in the world is going on with you? So anyway, I talked to him and I said, you need to get to some counseling. I mean, literally in your area, what church are you going? That was the first thing that happened. That was a major something that happened in his church. He was going to Bishop Eddie Long's church. And when all of that scandal took place with it, it affected the membership. And this guy was closely tucked up on, under in this ministry with the men's ministry that it caused a split. And when they split, he did not connect quickly to another men's group. And he went out there trying to do it on his own. That stuff can last for a little while. It can last for a little while. But you're going to have to connect up somewhere else. That's, that, that, was, that was Bishop Eddie Long's experience. That wasn't yours. And I know, you were, I know you were affected by it. But now now you're seeing that your disconnect is causing you not to have the, the, the undergirding that you need. And you are a prime candidate for the enemy because you know too much of the word. 
And now it lets me know that you were sitting up under the word, but you weren't operating completely up under the word. You were not being obedient. You were getting everything you needed, but you were not literally operating. And uh, sure enough, it came down to you, y'all. It was a, it was a, a, a I, I'll never forget it. Never forget it. But one of the things, y'all, I had to get bold with him and let him know that you're going to have to recreate some kind of way this experience with God. You're going to have to either get out there and start doing what God has asked you to do. Or you're going to find some new community. And then I told him, I said, as a matter of fact, this time, as you're doing it different, I need you to get some lifelines in your life. You need to get some doctors on your lifeline. You don't want no, you know, no secular. He was very strong on wanting a uh, spiritual lead. You need to get you a good spiritual leader because that's the first thing. Evidently, where you're at is not lining up with what you believe. He had gone to a counselor. His faith was so strong that his faith was beyond what even the counselor was talking about. First of all, you're at the wrong church. That's the first thing. When you've been up under that type of teaching, you're going to have to find something equivalent to it. And the only way to do that is to ask God. Okay. You got to find your great brotherhood because that's what helped you to grow. And then you need to find you some, some people, the people of God that you need. It can't be just your brotherhood because what happens when that falls apart? You got to find other people to be in your life. That's all I'm saying to all of us. Sometimes we get stunted because we had an experience that happened in our life and we never go get reconnected to anything. All we keep talking about the last time I was in this and all this kind of stuff. No, 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 no. No, that was just an experience. That's what I call you took a five minute experience or a 30 minute experience and you milked it for five or 30 years. You keep using that as an excuse. No, you eventually need to come from the outer courts of the tabernacle to the inner courts to finally get to what we call the Holy of Holies. All right, God, I've seen a lot. I've done a lot. What do you require of me? Marriage. That's the, listen, that is the, that is the tell all before you get ready for being qualified for marriage. You need to be at a place to where you ask God, Lord, this ain't about me getting my needs fulfilled. I want to know how I can serve in a relationship like that. Becoming leaders, whatever, there needs to be an end all to where it says, Lord, how can I serve at a higher capacity with that? It can't be all about that childlike behavior with yourself. What if I ain't getting nothing from y'all? I can't. I was telling our class this morning. When I tell you, y'all, I have had to go to secular podcasts to get some answers to some things that were going on, but I had to go through the fluff of all the cussing and all the blood, all that kind of stuff just to get the meat out of it. And I'm thinking, why can't we create environments like that, communities like that? Because we won't be honest, because we won't be true. We got to learn how to be honest about the things that have gone in our life. Oh, yeah, I went through something with that church split. You know, that, that, that did something to me. I went through something with that divorce. I went through something when my child came out and said they were transgender. I went through a lot. And you got to find outlets because life has got to keep going on, y'all. We can't stay in a childlike state. The way you keep blaming everybody else for what you know, it was something that happened. This is the course of life that you're on. You got to learn how to keep on walking on. That's, that's how life is. When you finally grow up spiritually, spiritually and you realize that the Lord is always there for me. I learned my lot in life. Many of you know the story of my son. I have a son that's incarcerated. And my son struggled with that uh, assignment. Because that's what I call it. It was an assignment. He struggled with it for many, 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 many years. So much to the point to where... Uh, the first five years of his life, um, I was there back and forth, back and forth. I traveled back and forth to the units. And then there was a day I didn't have to go back anymore. I didn't have to go back as often as I did before because he finally grew up. He found another community. He found some men that could help him grow. You know, he found where his passion was at. He found himself. He, he's at that place. This is what I said. These are qualifications for coming home. He's at a place of self-actualization now. That's the only qualification to truly get ready to come home from things like that uh, is that you are ready to serve. And he's serving before he comes home. He's doing his Toastmasters. He's getting it all together. And uh, I can hear his compassion for the people that are there, you know, because on his own, he would not have went. I wouldn't have either. He wouldn't have went into an environment like that. But our brothers were suffering. Our young boys are needing people. 
you know. And me as a mother, I couldn't take that personal because he belonged to God. When I gave him back over to God and said, Lord, I trust you with him. But Lord, just don't take his life because it could have been that too. And I said, Lord, I don't know if I could handle that. I, I know that I probably could handle whatever it is that God places on my life in time. But I didn't want to go back through that again. I'd already been through a long, long span of getting over uh, death, you know, with my mom. I did not want to. I said, Lord, I give him that. I never forget the night that I did it. And God got him the same night. Same night after we came out of prayer. And I had to give him a nevertheless. Not my will, but thy will be done. I never forget when my son, my oldest son, came over that morning and I had to give him the news. And his faith kicked in. He realized I couldn't pray. And DeMarcus said, he said, God, the weapon is formed, but it ain't going to prosper. That's all I needed to hear. I, I, I saw a t-shirt that uh, Sarah Jakes did. She said, I wish a weapon would. <laughs> that was the name of her shirt. I wish a weapon would. And sometimes that's what you need to say as you're growing up, making a decision to grow up. I wish a weapon would form because you ain't going to prosper. Because I got to keep growing in this. In my marriage, I wish a weapon would. With my children, I wish a weapon would. On my job, I'm not going to get stuck up in this anymore. I wish a weapon would come in and form. Because you ain't going to prosper. Because I'm going to find a way to make it work for my good. God's going to always turn that thing around. See, that's where you reach that ultimate level of growth in your life when you give God nevertheless. You give God nevertheless, not my will. You're not going to be irritable anymore. You're not going to be over there frustrated. The baby, you in that baby state, you go through these different stages of innocence. You know, you go through arrogance. Then you also, you know, you think you everything. Then all of a sudden you become irritable. When you get to the irritable state, you already know you're almost there. <laughs> I ain't got so irritated. Listen, you ain't irritated with nobody else but yourself. <laughs> you got to get, we call it being sick and tired. You got to get sick and tired. I came from the outer court, God. You mean it was more? I didn't came inside the church. God said there's more to whom much is given, much is going to be required. You could tell when the Lord is really pushing you. And he's really waking you up in the middle of the night. That's because he's got more of an assignment for you. You can't get stuck where you are. You got to ask the Lord, all right, God, as a nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. This is where the Lord takes you to the, the holy of holies. You got to wash yourself. Now wash your mind. See, listen, there are some gifts that you want, and I want you guys to see yourself as a gift, especially my ladies out there and the men, too, that are wanting to be married or what. You better see yourself as a gift and stop, and, and stop. you know, you know how it is, dummying yourself down. You are a gift. People need to raise to the occasion. Either they're going to raise to the occasion or they're not going to get the gift that God has. Get yourself in a position to where you know the Lord is preserving you. The Lord is keeping you. The Lord is comforting you. You ain't no baby like, you know, I got to go out there and go shake my fe tail feathers or I got to be out there like the Instagram post. No, that's childlike behavior because you're trying to get something from God in an unnatural way. That's why everybody out there trying to outdo each other. Why don't you be unique and do something different? Why don't you let your natural beauty come out? Why don't you let your yes be yes and your no be no? Why do you have to use all that vulgar language? Why do you have to go out there and repeat everything you see on Instagram? Because there ain't no representatives too much in the body. Because we over there too watching Instagram. Get to a place where there can be a uniqueness. Open up the door. Some things that God has allowed you to go through. Y'all, I was just thinking about that this morning. I said, Lord, I remember when you called me and uh, into uh, mentorship. Because it was a struggle that was going on in my life. I couldn't wait on nobody to bring no answers to that. I am the answer. And I went in. I said, Lord, all you got, all you got to do is teach me. I'm like that centurion soldier. You ain't got to come to my house. Just speak the word. Tell me what you want me to do. Give me the, give me some, you know, descriptives of whatever it is that I can understand. Because I can't understand everybody writing. <laughs> you know, they say the handwriting on the wall. I need to be able to read that handwriting. Give me a way. And then give me the avenue. And then send the people in, God. That's what I've grown to, what I call self-actualization. I'm ready to give it out to other people. All right, I've gone as far as I can go with that because we learned that an idle, idle mind, when you're not using what God has given to you, it's the devil's workshop. 
You got to grow up spiritually. That's where we all are. I think the shutdown, everything that went on with the pandemic, was God said, I need y'all to grow up. I need the body of Christ to become the body of Christ. And I need y'all to stand as a representation of me. Because if you don't stand as a representation, the world is going to bring a copycat in. And the copycat, they're not going to know the difference between the two. That's why our children keep on gravitating to it. Because we did not get in our proper place to represent God properly. So now they got a mixture of things going on in the world. They sound like God. They quoted a script. I was listening to this guy last night. I said, I know he didn't. He already had a good message going on. Then you had to try to quote the scripture and then quoted it wrong. He's, I think that's what he said. I'm like, stay in your lane. That is not your lane. You got some good wisdom with what you're producing, but you're going to be much better when you come into the kingdom. If you just turn those things into some kingdom practices, I guarantee you won't have to, you, because people vacillate in and out a whole lot when it's not God completely doing it. God is giving you wisdom, but you ain't giving God the credit for what he's doing. So you're having to struggle with it a whole lot. I'm going somewhere with this message. I'll be back with it next week again. Because I think I'm frustrated with this baby-like stuff. Folks saying that they say that I love God, but your behavior is something else. You trying to get the tithes and the offerings from somebody, but you ain't you haven't grown up. You not being a representative. Ain't nobody following you because they watching your behavior. They ain't listening to your words. They watching your behavior. And your behavior stinks. That's what they call you, you, you preparing a meal, but you serving it on a trash can top. It may be some good food, but I ain't finna eat it. You gave it to me on a trash can top. You gave it to me fussing. You gave it to me arguing. No, why, did you, why can't you present it in a spirit in which God is giving? Yeah, I've been there before too. Don't be so holier than thou. That even when people show you where the nail prints are, where they, when they show you that they've been in pain, don't be a, well, that's why you're going through what you're going through. No, you're not going to win people like that. You're not going to win that. It's very unhealthy. And so we got to grow up. I'm going to come back next week and talk about that. Growing up a little bit more in the spirit. We got to get out of this baby stage that we are in. Ain't nothing ever happened in my life before. I'm going to quit. you like Jeremiah. I, I'm quit. I ain't telling them nothing else. I find myself there sometimes. <laughs> I ain't going to do it no more, God. They ain't going to listen. <laughs> and you listen, you got to understand that God gave the assignment to you. Stop going over there and pouting every time you turn around. You know, maybe you over there talking to the wrong people. You ever been over there talking to the wall and think the wall going to talk back to you? No, get over there and talk to the people that God told you to talk to. And then you can get a response. <laughs> he said, if I be lifted up, he's going to draw all men into himself anyway. If you over there, y'all, I'm done with that. I'm talking about myself. <laughs> I'm talking about myself now. Over there pouting sometimes. Grow up. That's what the Lord said. Grow up. Know that I've called you for what I've called you to do. Be a little bit more assertive than what you do. <laughs> Over there, over there in the corner. You done put yourself in the corner this time. I already know. I'm going to put my nose to the wall. <laughs> no, get yourself up out that thing and go into the Holy of Holies. Find out why God is sending you into the place. I don't want to go there either, Lord. That stuff hurt. <laughs> Lord said, get your hind self over there. And let people see the nail prints in your hand. That's all I've been hearing God say. You got to be a little bit more transparent than what you are. Because for where you're going... You're going to have to let transparency take you there. Because right now, it looks like you ain't been through nothing. But you know you have. You know them night season. You ain't told nobody about them time you went over there and put your nose in the wall. <laughs> it was over there whining. <laughs> Lord, I don't want to be telling them that. They're going to be judging me. <laughs> Lord said, tell your story. I will protect you with it all. I'll send the right people in. I'm like, all right, then, God. Listen, this is what I told Lord. Don't let him start no mess. <laughs> I don't forget what I told the Lord that one day. The Lord had called me back in and served at this church. I love him. Don't start no mess. <laughs> Are you going to be telling God what to do? But anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking it, to, sticking to it this morning. Grow up. Grow up spiritually. Get yourself out the baby-like stage. Quit crawling back every time you turn around. Getting in a fetal position, you done put the whole whole um, bowl of ice cream in your bed. <laughs> Go cause you over there throwing temper tantrum. You don't know you gonna deal with that weight in the morning. You ate the whole bowl of brownies. 
Because <laughs> he was throwing a temper tantrum. Just childish. <laughs> Deal with it. Okay, I understand you got some popcorn, but did you have to eat the whole bag of popcorn? Or can you just get you a little bit? Oh, just to, just to get the edge off. No, I'm just going to eat the whole thing. You know, <laughs> just just be a baby. Like, anyway, that's my story. I'm going to stick to it. I don't know if it resonates with y'all or not, but I hear the Lord say we got we to gotta grow up. We got to, you know, be a little bit more transparent with some things. Amen. Be ready to tell your story. All right, well, that's my story. I'm going to leave this song with you here. God says, I want you to make room. And uh, I love this. Jonathan Mac uh, McReynolds, he sings this song called Make Room. Yeah. This weekend, let it be a solemn weekend where you make some decisions. And press in. There's some things you need to go make right. I'm speaking this in the spirit realm, too. Yes. Stop Stop holding everything personal that somebody does. Let, let them be accountable for the decisions that they make. But I need you to press in. And don't be running away from everything. Sometimes you got you, you to gotta go get it in the spirit. Don't go get it in the natural. Go get it in the spirit. Call those things that be not as though they already are. Bring peace to that marriage. Bring peace in your home. Bring peace in your congregation. It's all about perception. Everybody sees things a little different. It's okay. But all that matters is, Lord, what do you say? And see, until you create an energy and a space for God to come in and dwell, stop texting folk, stop blowing their phone up, and stop trying to get your point over. Say what you need to say and come on up out of there. If there's silence that needs to be there, let silence be there. But whatever you do, see, because you need to know that it's the Lord at work with this thing. Because as long as you keep on chasing, you keep on doing you're going to forever be chasing and forever doing it. Wait on God. Some of you just got a kink in your hose. That's all. The fountain is already open. It was already turned on. The day you were born, it was turned on. But until you get to the right space and the right mindset and the right attitude, when you were a child, God accepted those things. But when he starts revealing to you, you got some gifts in you, you got to activate that gift. And until you get into the right space in your front, in, the, in your frame of mind, that kink in that hose ain't going to open up. Some of the things that you're wanting God to bring your way, you're not qualified for it yet. Stop throwing things back all the time. Well, if it was going to be mine, it was going to be mine anyway. No. What did the Lord say? That's why I say I got to activate my faith again. Whatever the Lord said, that's what it is. I mean, I know what everybody else said. What did the Lord say? What did the Lord, did he bring a witness in your spirit about something? And if he did, stick to it. Stop changing your mind so much. Just stick to it. And let the Lord reveal the rest of the thing. Be still and know that he is God. Make room this weekend. Use this time just to worship. Use this time to fast. Have you ever tried fasting? Is there something can only come out except through fasting and prayer? Y'all, when I needed God to heal my son and my daughter from COVID, that's what happened. I had to be still. I had to get still. I had to let some other people come into my life of faith. Tell me to walk through this. You know, and keep praying because they wouldn't let you in the hospitals at that time. Lord, I need you to do what you're going to do. Got some other situations going on in your life? Can't get to the bottom of it? Get out the way. Let love come in. Let the Lord bring the right people in that can speak to you. Quit talking about you know, you know, you know. If you knew why you're not doing it. You just don't want nobody to see in your pain. I like this song. That's what we're doing this weekend. We're making room for God. Get that doubt, that fear, that bad conversation. 
You ain't gonna never have it. Let me say this to you too in closing. There are some people that's getting invited to the table in your life. That as y'all come together, it's what the scriptures say, iron comes in to sharpen iron. But you got to show up too. Iron is coming in to sharpen iron. It ain't no competition. You're just coming in to sharpen one another. You got to make room. Maybe they have actually tried God in that area before. And now you're going to have to open up your discernment. All right, God, that, that look like you, but I ain't sure because, see, the only time I know is you is when you're doing it in me. But look like I'm seeing it in someone else, God. I, I need to know God's going to bring some people into your life that's going to help you to see it through different lens. And you're going to have to check the spirit. Don't you call something unclean that God has called clean. Wait on God the very moment that it, listen, Touches your heart, but you got to remember your flesh in there too because you've been whining about some stuff. You you trying to let faith and your flesh operate together. And one going to have to get gutted out for this blessing. And God's going to bring some people in. I know you got some experiences. I know you got some things that's been going on. But you need to let the faith outweigh your experiences. And you got to let your discernment come in. Because this thing is speaking to my very... It ain't going to leave you alone. I'm going to tell you that for sure. Because when God comes in and the Lord is ready for a change within you, you ain't going to be able to get no sleep. You're going to be like Jonah in the belly of the whale. You ain't going to be able to cough this one up yet. You ain't going to be able to just bury this. And you can whine all you want to. You can do all this one here. You're going to have to obey God. Because I heard your prayers. And I like that prayer you prayed. I love that desire you had for me. And I need you to wait on me. The people that I brought into your life, they're skilled in waiting. They know how to wait for those things. But they're not going to wait forever. Got to get it together. See, don't be surprised at who's hearing the message this morning. But I need to make sure you hear the message. Know your place. God is bringing some people into your life. Make room for these people to come in. Make room for God to come in, first of all. Because God's the only one that's going to be able to reveal to you who these people are. It takes a minute. And it'll tell you how long you've been operating in your flesh over there, too. Take you a long time to recognize God, except when it's coming through you. That's because you've been operating in your flesh for a long time. You have to gut that stuff out through fasting and prayer so that the Lord can bring to you those two pieces of iron coming together. They come in to sharpen one another. I hope this message made sense to y'all. Yes, too often we are in our own way. Too often we are in our own way. That is so true. Gotta go, sis. Amen. Thank you, Denise. I appreciate it. Stop clapping back and listen to God's instructions. Amen. Thank you for your transparency. Yes. Y'all be blessed. Make room for God this weekend. Don't be surprised at what he'll do. And he that shall come, he will not tarry. He'll come quickly in Jesus' name. Amen.